I'm so privileged to be here, Sadhguru. Thank you so much. And I'll begin with the, the thing that's been most spoken about over the last few years, which is really COVID. And with COVID almost behind us, you know, there's been new learnings, new realizations. There's the great resignation happening on the corporate side. There's what healthcare stood up and healthcare workers stood up and did so much. Um, but they did it also, Sadhguru, to save lives, but at a cost to themselves and their families. And I think one of the big things we realized is that we have to help them be stronger and more resilient inside to face up to these things because there's no guarantee that we won't have another pandemic. So what is your advice to healthcare people in general? Definitely uh, during the, the severe part of the pandemic, which might have been probably 10 to 11 months or so in India. I think uh, the doctors, the nurses and the other allied, Paramedic, yeah. other allied workers, I think they did a fantastic job. So, uh, because we felt the caregivers themselves are deeply driven to a corner. Yes. So, what kind of care will they give as they… and they started collapsing many of them. Yes. And many doctors and nurses have lost their lives around the world and also in India. So definitely we bow down to them for what they have done. But for the doctors, these stats I'm saying are all from pre-pandemic times. On an average in United States, every day one doctor commits suicide. On an average in UK, UK every year 500 doctors commit suicide. The year that I was speaking at, I don't remember the year, I was speaking at the Yale Medical University, they said, on an average, twenty-seven doctors in Yale University commit suicide. What is this? It is the pressure of the job no, as well. That's what, when we say the pressure happen. of the job, everybody says their job is very pressure, high pressure. But the important thing is we need to understand pressure and stress is not in the work that we do. It's in the way we hold ourselves. Is your physiological process, psychological process, chemical process, energetic processes, are they at least to some extent in your control? If they are to some extent in your control, where… whatever the nature of your job, wherever you are, you can keep yourself well. I'm not here to tell the doctors about their medical skills and stuff, which they need to work upon always, because medical sciences Almost at the same pace as information technology, it's developing. It, both of them are linked, you are a link. <laughs> so, when this is happening, keeping abreast with the knowledge and the new things that are happening is their job, I, I don't want to comment on that. But whatever knowledge you may have, whatever skills you may have, if you don't have balance within you, if you don't know how to be pleasant within yourself, your skills and your knowledge need not necessarily work for well-being. When somebody goes to your doctor, especially a surgeon, let's say, in many ways uh, you trust your life with that man or woman, Absolutely. whoever she is or he is. Most people can't do that with their own family. <laughs> with their own husband, wife and child, they can't trust their life. But they're trusting their life because somewhere there is a godlike quality attached to a surgeon, he's going to open you up and do something to you. And you don't know he can do anything. He can cut whatever he wants. You have no control to say, no, don't cut this, cut this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he can cut whatever. You're asleep. Huh? You're asleep. You, you're gone, I'm saying. <laughs> so when this is the case, to earn this level of trust is not a small thing. Yes. When people hold this kind of trust in you that you'll always do the right thing, I think you have an immense responsibility to keep yourself well. I always keep repeating this, if you… if you think the work that you're doing is important, the most important thing in your life is to work upon yourself. If you don't work upon yourself and you think your work is important, slowly your work will be run down kind of work. After all, you're human, all right? That's how it's going to be. However good you are, it's going to happen. It's going to happen to everybody, however good we may be at what we are doing, if we don't take care of a few things about ourselves, we will go like this slowly. So, especially being in this business of medicine, 
where its life and death were somebody else. I think every doctor working upon themselves is important. What is working upon myself, shall I go to the gym and do a workout? That's not the point. Growing muscles is good for something else. But for this purpose, you need to work upon yourself. As a part of this, 285,000 doctors around the world did inner engineering free of cost with us during the pandemic. Yes, yes. Many, many from Apollo as well, Sadhguru. So I'm saying this is important that they need to invest that kind of time upon themselves because the work that you're doing is not just work. For you, you may be thinking it's work. You also should not think it's work, it's work. because it's life and death for somebody. When somebody's life is in question and they're lying there in total trust, I think you have a super responsibility to keep yourself in the best possible way. Physically, mentally, emotionally, you must be in the best possible way. If you're not in the best possible way, me opening up your body and searching for something there is a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> No, that's absolutely true, Sadhguru. And you know, this conference is about using the latest technology. There's AI, there's robotics, there's drones, there's all kinds of things on display. And on another side, keeping patient safety up utmost, the right balance is yes. critical and that, that's true, Sadhguru. And I think all of us as healthcare people also are searching beyond, you know, whether on one side, on the science side, the DNA side, but also aware that there's more. And I heard about your center. Uh, the Sadhguru Center for the Conscious Planet. Uh, it, it sounds fantastic. Tell us more about So, that. it is based in the Harvard Medical School, Beth Israel uh, Medical, Medical Center. And I, I've, I've been there. Right. So, I've some been really smart uh, scientists are working on this. We also have collaboration with Indian, Indiana University and University of Florida. They have done some incredible work. One thing is they have done work on inner engineering and its impact on people. One thing they have noticed is, uh, there are many other studies which are sociological kind of studies, but I will just stick to a couple of them that I am conscious of. They have done so many other things which are too scientific for me. <laughs> I am not interested in so much science. So, one thing I'm is… I am going to share links of all the studies uh, with everyone in the audience. That's okay. good. We can so, provide that to yes. you. So, one thing is, uh, <clears throat> the genetic expressions, nearly 230 of the genes, gene expressions are elevated because of the practice. That means they're functioning much better. Especially anandamide and other endocannabinoids are up by 70 percent. BDNF is up by 70 percent. This means even if you live to be hundred, you will retain all your faculties. Which is so critical yes. because… And the telemeter length, you know, which is the University of California did this and they said people who did the practice for three months, they're six and a half years younger on the cellular level. Wow. Just within three months. And this is studied by measuring the length of the telomere. Yes. And the telomere has a direct correlation yes. on healthy longevity. So this is very, very significant. We need to understand this. The science is amongst us in India. Uh, we have been absorbing, you know, knowledge from the West. We want to understand this and figure out how we can... How do we bring this to our patients, Sadhguru? We can definitely look at that. Before that, one important thing we need to understand is, what is science? Mm -hmm. Science means, if I can do something to you and it worked for you, and if I can make it work for these hundred people out here… Replicable. It's science, all right? Well, I can make it work for millions of people, why is it not science? No, we will. It, it is science. science. No, no, but the problem is, it is still not considered science. Ah, till it's research. I am the one who is making the term yogic sciences. I am not call this, calling this yoga, I am saying these are yogic sciences because you can You're get… Using the terminology we understand or we've been conditioned to. So, when I can do something to myself and it works, and the same thing if I tell somebody, this is what you do, and it works for them, it is science. Absolutely. It's repeatable and there is a process, all right? There is a logical process. If you do this, this and this, this will happen. So, this is the significance of yoga, that 
Over fifteen thousand years ago, Adi Yogi propounded this, that there are different ways to address human well-being. Subjective aspects of who you are can be addressed in scientific ways. Till now, most of the generations or all generations in most cultures have only addressed subjectivity either with belief system or looking up to something or with a philosophy or an ideology or with some mumbo jumbo that they can do, all right? Or just believe that it's all God's will and endure that. This is the only way. But over fifteen thousand years ago, Adi Yogi offered that there are scientific methods and with, with, with those, with that knowledge you can create technologies, subjective technologies with which you can address this and one hundred and twelve ways is what he gave. It's because of that to honor him. That's why I keep repeating Adi Yogi is not a man of the past, he's a phenomenon for the future. Because never before human societies had enough logic in their head to address their subjectivity scientifically. It is only the future generations which will be competent to do this. Even the present generation is not competent. Amazing. So, what is happening is, the most important thing is, right now we have a generation where more people can think logically than ever before. Never before this many people could think logically, could even think for themselves, mm -hmm. especially women, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of generations ago, not so much in India, people think India is a backward country, but not yeah. so much in India. Yeah. But in the rest of the world, a woman was not even supposed to think for herself, she should not think for herself. People have been punished and burnt and uh, called witches simply because they thought for Started themselves. Thinking and speaking, yes. Yeah. So, for just straight away fifty percent of the population is right there thinking for themselves. It's a massive thing. It's not a small thing. It's not about women's rights. It's about human generations are moving into logical patterns of thinking. Whether thinking right or wrong, we can always debate that. But it doesn't matter, it's some nonsensical thought they are thinking for themselves. Not a scripture, not a teacher, not a guru, not a god is thinking for them. They are thinking for themselves. Once they start thinking for themselves, however silly somebody's pattern of thinking may seem to you or me, in their mind they have a logic for that. So, thought cannot happen without some kind of process. So, once a process is set up within you, you're ready for other processes. You're not looking for miracle. You're not looking for magic, you're looking for logic of life, right? You're looking for logic. So, once a generation moves into this, naturally unless something is scientifically correct or at least logically correct, they cannot adhere to it. Otherwise, why should they come to you to the hospital? God will take care of you, everything is fine, right? Yes, but if you God takes care of you, you have to go to Him only. Nobody wants to go, everybody wants to pray from here <laughs> Everybody loves God, but nobody wants to go. Everybody wants to pray long distance. But I'm glad you came here instead of doing long distance with me <laughs> So, this is very important that there are solutions within. You can change your very chemistry. You can change the fundamental chemistry of your body and mind. So this is something as a movement, we will take this up in a big way because today WHO is predicting a mental health pandemic. Yes. Uh, mental health is already a pandemic if you ask me. Because when doctors are saying they're stressed, it is a pandemic. Stress is a mental health issue, isn't it? Stress, tension, anxiety, total madness, whatever you want to call it. Es essentially, what is happening is, your intelligence is working against you. See, if I poke you with a knife, it hurts you physically, understandable. You'll move away. You will move away, you will deal with it whichever way you can. But now, you're using the sharpness of your intellect to poke yourself. If I give you the brain of an earthworm, of course you'll sit very peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, your problem is your intelligence because intelligence is a sharp thing and you don't know how to hold it. If you hold the ro knife at the wrong end, the harder you hold it, the more you will bleed, isn't it? That's all that's happening. 
because our education systems, our social uh, patterns now, in India it's still there, we may lose it in a generation or two unless we strongly put it back, that we have not taught a human being how to be. We are teaching a human being how to conquer the world. This is a tragedy. For this we will pay a price. Mental health pandemic and it's progressing into suicide pandemic. Suicide pandemic means this year, that is 2021 I think, 132,000 people in India committed suicide, which is the highest number ever. Out of this, 18,600 are below 18 years of age. 7,200 are below 15 years of age. 12, 13, 14 year old child wants to take their own life when they should be bursting with life. If they want to take their own life, don't we understand we're doing something fundamentally wrong? We're eating wrong, breathing wrong, sitting wrong, everything wrong. Now, sickness or ailments which which I think people think is normal as you age. With age, your agility and strength may go a little bit, but need not necessarily mean ill health. Yes. One reason is you're wearing down your organs somehow. Well, some people may have intrinsically or genetically something weaker in them, some problem in them, that's different, but I would say, I know doctors will disagree with me, but I would say that percentage is still well below twenty-five percent. Others, all our organs are designed to last for a lifetime. It is just that if you uh, buy a Maruti car, you should drive it on the road. If you want to go off-road, you must buy a jeep. If you're driving your Maruti car like a jeep, something may break down. If you're driving your jeep like a Ferrari, something else will break down. That's a different matter. So, according to your lifestyle and what you do, uh, maybe you'll have to adjust your body to those kind of things a little bit. Not everybody can do the same things to the same extent. That is always there. But everybody can manage in such a way that your organs will last for a lifetime. Unless some injury, accident, something happened, you know, untoward happened. But general living itself is wearing down your organs, means you're not living properly. You have no life sense. That's what it means. So that life sense is not brought into our life at all. Mm. Simply, somehow live. Every three years they keep changing what is the ideal food to eat. <laughs> With this kind of confusion, how will you have any life sense? So this life sense should be brought into the doctors. It's very, very important. Because they are the people who are supposed to transmit health. But right now they are only prescribing medicine. I, I think we need to hold that phrase, very, very important. Transmit health rather than only prescribe medicine. Yeah, so when this is the thing, is it not important that doctors and medical personnel should do know much more about health than medicine? Medicine is important at a certain level. Medicine has become important <coughs> mainly because infectious diseases were the main thing which used to take life. And infectious diseases are uncontrollable because of population concentration, our pattern of building cities, how people are living. If you were living in the open, we didn't have to care about pandemics. What is the problem? You know? Isn't it? Absolutely. We are concentrated. We are more concentrated than uh, any other creature on the planet these days. So because of that infection, but we have mastered the infectious diseases once we had some trouble with pandemic, but with rest of those deadly things, we have mastered that. So, this has been a fascinating conversation and I think all of us sitting here understand the deeper dimensions to health, to the practice of medicine, to the use of every technology possible. And the biggest learning for me today is that yoga is not an ancient practice, but a current day science. And I thank you, Sadhguru. Futuristic it is. No, and, <laughs> and it will gain more and more momentum in the future, if we understand it as such. I so would like to I, say that, uh, uh, you know, whoever is in the research end of your me. Apollo thing, please connect with the, this Howard Research Howard. Institute that we have. And we should have an India Center, Sadhguru. Why do we have to, we will we'll do an India center all together mm -hmm. uh, because we want this, we want more cures and solutions and those solutions